Early on Friday afternoon East Coast time, the Miami Dolphins and the San Francisco 49ers agreed to a huge blockbuster trade that involved three number one picks and a third round pick to move up from 12 to 3, and at the time we thought that was going to be the only blockbuster trade of the day. Ironically, I had started to make this video and discuss the implications for everything, and then another Schefter bomb was dropped on us when the Dolphins traded 12 and a future one to move back up to 6. We're going to break everything down in today's video as, ironically, when this happened, 49ers general manager John Lynch was at Zach Wilson's pro day in Utah, so who knows how much he was bombarded with questions during this time, if any at all. The source for that, by the way, is Matt Miller from ESPN and his Twitter account. Now, before we dive into this and break everything down, please like the video and subscribe to the channel as each only take a second to do and it would be very much appreciated. Now, let's begin. For years now, since Kyle Shanahan took the 49ers job in early 2017, we have been discussing him getting his guy at the quarterback position and that is nothing new. He had the chance when they originally had the number 2 overall pick that year before trading back to 3rd overall to let the Bears go up and get their guy who we now know was Mitchell Trubisky. Later that year, the 49ers traded for Jimmy Garoppolo and at first, everything looked alright. They finished 2017 with him going 5-0 as their starter and they paid him heavily that offseason by signing him to a $100 million plus extension. Now, unfortunately for the 49ers and for Jimmy, he tore his ACL early in 2018, prematurely ending his year and leaving fans and really the front office wondering if he was going to be okay or if he was indeed going to be the next franchise quarterback in the 49ers' beloved and very successful franchise. Well, in 2019, he came back and he was the starting quarterback on a team that went to the Super Bowl. Now, notice I said the starting quarterback on a team that went to the Super Bowl and not he led them to the Super Bowl on his backs with his impressive play in the postseason because that was certainly not the case. Now, he didn't play bad in the 2019 playoffs and the divisional round against the Vikings or the conference championship against the Packers, he just wasn't asked to do much, and well, there was a reason for that. I think at this point in time, Kyle knew he what he was, and he was never going to be their franchise quarterback for more than his contract, or until they could trade him, or do what they did today, make a blockbuster trade to ensure they are getting their guy of the future, which, as we know now, they are. Now, what I will say about the 49ers in this trade is they know who they're selecting now. The NFL has pretty much banned saying teams publicly that they will select whichever player, but we know now number one is Trevor Lawrence and number two is probably Zach Wilson. We know this because after the trade with the Eagles, a report came out that said the Eagles wanted to trade up if they could get Zach Wilson, trade up with the Dolphins that was, and they found out one way or another they were not going to get him, so now we know with that said information, the Jets are going to select Zach Wilson at number two overall. So now we know the first two picks in the draft, and whether you realize this or not, the 49ers essentially start the draft at number three overall with their selection of either Trey Lance or Justin Fields. Now, shortly after this trade, and obviously after that is very hectic things around the NFL and everything going on, Lance Zierlein of NFL Network said, and I will post a screenshot as you guys see, quote, now Daniel Jeremiah is mentioning that Mac Jones at number three overall is not out of the question, end quote, and I'm going to be completely honest with you guys as I always am and try to be as crystal clear as I can with opinions or rumors around the league whenever things like this occur. There is no way I see that happening, and I really hope the 49ers are not stupid enough to trade three first round picks to move up to get Mac Jones. Now, I'm not this Daniel Jeremiah because remember he is extremely successful and he is way more respected guy than myself and will probably have the opportunity to be an NFL GM one day I just don't see any way this is possible and I honestly don't understand why DJ would mention this because I don't see it happening at all to me that is a complete head scratcher but anyways getting back on track one way or another Justin Fields or Trey Lance will be a 49er in a little over a month and today confirms it this is the first breaking news we've had in a while as NFL teams wise and I really cannot wait to see how it all plays out John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan have had their eyes on one of them for a while now, and this type of trade does not happen overnight. They didn't just wake up and call the Dolphins today and say, hey guys, how are you doing? Oh good, how's your coffee? Or, oh, you want to do a little trade today? Let's call it a day. No. Not quite. This has been in the works for some time, and who knows how long is a question none of us now know the answer to. But for the future of the NFC West, now that this has happened, Russell Wilson, Kyler Murray, Matt Stafford, and I would assume Justin Fields is the best division of quarterbacks in football, period. This division is going to be insane this year, and they could very well send three out of four teams to the playoffs, and obviously with three wildcard spots now, they have the capability to send all four teams if each team wins enough. We very much expect the 49ers to be back after a year of injuries, and this is a team that could be good for a while because of how smart of a coach Kyle Shanahan is. This offense getting a quarterback for the next 10 to 15 years makes them that much more dangerous, and everyone in the NFL, not just that division, has to be on the lookout for the 49ers, even with a rookie quarterback potentially starting for that team. 
Now having one of the big trades of today out of the way, we go to the other and although it is far less exciting, we are still going to discuss multiple first round picks being moved. Initially, Eagles fans were excited as hell about this trade of the 49ers and the Dolphins happening because that more than likely meant wide receiver Jamar Chase would fall into their laps at 6 overall and they would get Jalen Hurts a receiver and the best one in the draft at that. It is no secret how good Jamar is given his former LSU teammate Justin Jefferson just broke the NFL rookie record for receiving yards with 1400 in 2020 and he is viewed by NFL teams to be much better as a prospect than Justin Jefferson was. So Eagles fans were ecstatic that this happened and couldn't believe their luck, only to a few minutes later be in their own way devastated that they would no longer be getting Jamar Chase at number 12 overall. Now for the Eagles, I like this decision to trade back, as this roster has a lot of holes on it and that should be no secret to anybody. Getting an extra number one is always a good thing, and what I want Eagles fans to remember is this. This wide receiver class is absolutely loaded, so while you're no longer getting Jamar Chase, you can still get a very good receiver at 12 and Jalen Motto or Devontae Smith if both are available. I don't think they would reach for Bateman at 12, but you never know with Howie. And I would propose this to Eagles fans as well. Would you rather have the best receiver in the draft and nothing else, or would you rather have the number two receiver in the draft who would be one in most years because Jamar is as good as he is, and an additional first round pick? I would rather have two great players personally as how often do you see a wide receiver be the absolute biggest difference maker in a Super Bowl run? This is what I cannot stress enough. You rarely, rarely do is the answer and Jamar Chase does not take the Eagles from the number 6 overall pick to the Super Bowl in one year. He doesn't, and that's all there is to it. The Bucks won the Super Bowl this year with good defense and throwing to a tight end in Rob Gronkowski, and Tom Brady has won 7 Super Bowls without ever having a true dominant receiver on any of those teams. No, I'm not forgetting Randy Moss either. They lost when he was on the roster. Obviously not due to him and only him, but what I'm saying to Eagles fans is as much as they very well may have had their hearts set on Jamar Chase, it's not going to be the difference between the 6th pick and Lombardi number two. Lastly, for the Miami Dolphins, I cannot say how much I love what they're doing, and that would be an understatement. They have multiple first round picks, and while giving up a franchise tackle in Laramie Tunsil is always hard, they turned that into multiple first round picks and will still be getting Jamar Chase, at least more than likely Jamar Chase at this point in time and in the process of what we think right now. We know Tua needs weapons, and this would be a fantastic weapon to give them, and I got adding a first round pick for the future in their arsenal is a perfect job for the Dolphins in today's trades. This will be a very scary team over the next five years, and them letting Ryan Fitzpatrick go shows how much they believe in current quarterback Tua Tagovailoa. Tua had his fair share of shaky play in 2020, don't get me wrong, but getting him a number one receiver will be accomplished in this draft, and them moving back up to number six in this trade with the Eagles confirms it. Will Fuller can be a solid number two, but to put him in the same conversation with DeAndre Hopkins, Devontae Adams, Tyree Kill, and whoever else is not realistic, no disrespect if I didn't include your favorite receiver right there, that's also good, no disrespect. Uh, Jamar Chase becoming one of those players is production-wise, though, is realistic, and he can be a Dolphin for the next decade, along with who they believe is their franchise quarterback in Tua. Miami has had multiple first-round picks in the draft for what seems like a few years now, and everyone will start to see just how good they have constructed a football team. Yes, I am aware of Josh Allen and the Bills, as they just went to the AFC Championship game, but the Dolphins will push them to their limits, and then some in 2021 and beyond. I don't think there are any real losers out of these trades today, because everyone is getting something good from this. Now, the 49ers obviously have the biggest potential to come out of these trades as a loser because of trading three first round picks, but for the Dolphins to acquire an extra first round pick and for what we assume still getting their guy in Jamar Chase is incredible and in seemingly something out of a movie like Draft Day for example. These trades happened around 1 o'clock and I finished recording around 2.30, so this video may seem quickly put together or very reactionary, but again I tried to get this video out as quickly as I could for you guys. And I certainly hope you enjoyed and there will be more videos out soon. If you liked today's video, please like the video and subscribe to the channel, it would mean the world. Follow me on Twitter for more content, and as always, if you ever have a video suggestion, please comment below. Until next time, have a great, safe weekend, and love you guys. Deuces. Peace.